Hi there, Andrew here. We're putting feelers out for the idea of sponsors for the show. We have grown to a sizable audience of legal professionals, and we'd love to find a way to get the resources to continue to grow the show and spend more time on it. This might take the form of more longer form, maximum minimum competence episodes, or longer daily episodes, or maybe short interviews. We've had a couple of inquiries regarding sponsorship, but want to get feedback from all of you, the listeners. If you have thoughts or have a sponsor in mind that you think would be a good fit, shoot me an email at andrew at leahy.org. We're still very much in the brainstorming stage, so all ideas are good ideas. So ends the housekeeping segment. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Friday, March 3rd, 2023. I'm your host for today, Andrew Leahy, a tax and technology attorney from New Jersey. In today's episode, we have the Equal Rights Amendment fight heading to Congress, SCOTUS indicating it may sidestep election rulings, Google incognito failing to qualify as a class, and the conviction of Alex Murdoch. Let's discover the real legal news was the friendship we found along the way. The Equal Rights Amendment, which would guarantee U.S. women equal treatment under the law on a national level, has faced setbacks since its first introduction in 1923. The amendment finally passed through Congress in 1972, but was given a seven-year deadline, which 35 states approved by 1979, three short of the three-fourths threshold the Constitution requires. In January 2020, the Virginia legislature voted to approve the amendment, giving it the required approvals by 38 states, but the vote came four decades after Congress's 1979 deadline. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit rejected calls to order the ERA published as the 28th Amendment on February 28th, finding that the deadline Congress set for states to ratify it might mean the amendment's window for passage has closed. However, some of the ERA's most vocal supporters say it's still ripe to be recognized as part of the Constitution, guaranteeing U.S. women equal treatment under the law on a national level for the first time. The best option for now is likely through Congress, as pursuing an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court is not an option considering the conservative leanings of many current justices. Two resolutions pending in Congress would declare the Equal Rights Amendment fully ratified and proclaim the deadline void. But there's a dispute about whether Congress has the power to retroactively erase its deadline, as well as whether it would need a simple majority vote or a supermajority. The U.S. Supreme Court may avoid ruling on a significant case involving a Republican attempt to increase state legislature's power over federal elections. The North Carolina Supreme Court had granted a Republican request to reconsider a map of the state's 14 U.S. House of Representatives districts, which the court had previously found biased against Democratic voters. The case could lead to a reversal of the 2021 ruling if the Republican-dominated court overturns it. The U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments in December, but has not yet issued a ruling. In response to the North Carolina Supreme Court's actions, the court has asked for views on its jurisdiction in the matter. The case centers on a legal theory called the Independent State Legislature Doctrine that seeks to limit the role of state courts in regulating elections. By way of background, the Independent State Legislature Doctrine is a legal principle that recognizes the authority of state legislatures to regulate federal elections within their state without interference from the federal government or state courts or any other branches of government. The doctrine is rooted in the U.S. Constitution's Elections Clause, which grants state legislatures the power to determine the times, places, and manner of federal elections. Under the doctrine, the federal government can only regulate federal elections to the extent that state law does not conflict with federal law. The doctrine has been the subject of much debate and litigation, particularly in recent years, as states have sought to enact laws affecting voting rights and election administration. Supporters of the doctrine argue that it preserves the state's role in the federal system and allows for a diversity of election laws that reflect local values and priorities, while critics argue that it can lead to unequal access to voting and undermine the federal government's ability to protect voting rights. Google has won an appeal against a group of consumers who sued the company over its data collection practices. The plaintiffs had claimed that Google continued to collect data from users despite their use of private browsing in Chrome's incognito mode and were seeking at least $5 billion in damages. However, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco rejected their bid to appeal a lower court decision from last year that denied class action status for money damages claims against Google. The plaintiffs can still seek to revive their money damage claims when there is a final judgment and a jury trial is set for November. The lower court had certified two other classes that can seek other relief from Google, including curbing certain data collection practices. Google has denied that it deceived anyone over private browsing, saying its Chrome browser users consented to the company's data collection. An editorial note here, do yourself a favor and use something other than Google Chrome. On Mac OS, Safari is excellent. I've heard Microsoft Edge is pretty good as well. Chrome is bloated trash. Quick content warning here for references to a violent crime and some specifics. This is our last story, so if you want to hop off here, 
We'll see you Monday. Alex Murda, a prominent South Carolina lawyer, has been found guilty of murdering his wife and son in June of 2021. The verdict was announced by a jury after a six-week trial. Murda, a fourth-generation lawyer whose family had considerable influence in small-town courtrooms across parts of South Carolina, had lived a secret life in which he stole millions of dollars from clients and colleagues and lied to many of those closest to him. Prosecutors contended that Murdoch killed his son with a shotgun and then gunned down his wife with a rifle when she ran over to see what had happened. In addition to the murder charges, Murdoch was also found guilty of two counts of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime. The minimum sentence for murder is 30 years in prison, and prosecutors have said they will seek a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Dick Harputlian, one of Mr. Murdoch's lawyers, said he planned to appeal the verdict. Thank you so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all the topics touched on today are in the show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Andrew, and my co-host Gina is at Gina. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in the story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is part of the ESQ Cast network of podcasts and streams on esqstream.com. We'll see you back here on Monday. And until then, don't tug on Superman's cape.